56. And the Debian stuff, most of the stuff you're going to find there is either going to be old RV5, which is going to run really, really slowly, or RV7, which won't run at all. So, so Raspin has like their own package archives and stuff? Absolutely, uh, yeah. Packages you would make specifically for and five. Yep. So you found noobs? Pardon? You found noobs? No. So noobs was designed for you. If you go to the Raspberry Pi page and go to their downloads of all the distros, there's one called noobs. It stands for new out-of-box software. Okay. And it's six distros, I think, in one. And so when you boot it up, it gives you a little display. It's like, there's one of these you want to play with. You can grab me or side door or whatever you want to play with. And then when you're like, uh, I screwed that up. Like, I have totally worked my system. Or I just want to try something else. You pull down shift when you move, and you get that menu again. And you can try it. Oh, cool. So instead of having to reflash, it's right. like, it. Sure. What have you built, or want to build? Um, so I built a um, web server. We put it on the internet. A video went through it. Um, so you know, so kind of monitoring, you know, what's what's going on in the house, that kind of thing. But um, I've got two of them. Now, and I'm trying to figure out okay, what's the best use for for these two that I have? I'm thinking maybe like a, a storage for uh, so I can have my own cloud in my home, you know, that type of thing. I'm just your curiosity when you come out of the Just got it, so major plans with it. Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, a lot of those too. Uh, we built a lot of things, but we built a Transformer Salvo costume, which you should totally go see tomorrow. I'm just curious. Um, I set up a web server on my. Um, I actually just got it a few weeks ago, so I pretty much got Raspberry Pi so I can actually start to learn Linux. I'm actually a mechanical engineer, so I know next to no program mode. Um, but I'm curious. Um, but my end goal, I kind of want to do some kind of wearable computing. That I already bought um, a set of mind new glasses, so they're kind of uh, they new glasses, they're like 150 bucks on eBay. Um, and I kind of want to have, I have an old internet power mode, so I want to interface. And, and if you Google variations on Raspberry Pi Google Glass, several people have built essentially Google Glass off Google Pi that they sit on the belt. Nice. I heard, yeah, I heard that there's some kind of um, Android package you can download on Raspberry Pi. You should not do that. Okay. And you should under no circumstances do that. It's her, no, I, I'm not saying it's a bad idea. I'm saying you do that, see how slow it is, and then decide if you're ever, ever going to use it. Right. The answer is no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, so I heard that on top of downloading on Android, there is like an application for Android that essentially emulates Google Glass. So that's adorable. So, so, <laughs> so, so keep in mind, keep in mind that the Raspberry Pi is an ARMv6 chip. Your phone that you bought four years ago has an ARMv7 chip. To date, how powerful the Pi is in comparison to your phone. So. When you go to try to run Android on an ARM 6 chip, it runs incredibly painfully slow. And it might run faster if there was an optimized version for the hardware inside of the Raspberry Pi, but because there isn't, you're running entirely unaccelerated graphics, unaccelerated everything inside the system. It's compiled for the Pi, and a really old version of Android will run on the Pi. But when you go to launch your application, you're going to be like, I think this might have crashed. And you go and you get a pizza and you cook it and you eat it and you come back and it's starting to load. So it's and really... And you can make breakfast and you guys move your mouse. Yeah, so, so, it's, so, so, so Android, Android is really not a viable target for the buy. So I'm saving you three weeks of pain by yeah. just, honestly, just don't go near it. I had this plan as well. I believed, I believed in the Android of buy and I was going to do it. And the, so the project that's building it is called Raspberry. And they built it off of, you can build it off of CyanogenMod 7.2, which is several versions ago. And uh, they have an image, and you can, I recommend you just download it and use their image before you try their instructions for compiling it on your own, which won't work anyway. <laughs> I don't want to crush all your dreams. I'm just saying my dreams were crushed, and I'd like to save you some, some of your life. <laughs> How about you? Uh, very much an outside observer. So, I'm trying to do whatever I can with it. Like I got, I've had it for like I bought it on launch day, so I've done like I've done the 
X and or the Xbox media player thing, which is really cool. And then like I started playing around with nobody's gonna be able to see this. But if you can see this, what it is, it's a Raspberry Pi with a mess of wires around it, which looks like any Arduino project. And what's in here is there's a little thing you get from Adafruit called a, a Pi a cobbler, mm -hmm. which is a little breakout board, so you can get a ribbon cable that goes from Pi to this thing you can plonk into a breadboard and then you can make a mess of wires. And then my mess of wires is using Python to drive this cool RGB LCD display. And all it's doing is saying hello world. So it's a whole mess of wires to say hello world. But it's using Raspberry Pi and Python. Fun. So that was fun. That took me a couple of nights to so get to figure out the protocol how to talk about LCD. But what's cool is it's like if you've ever done Arduino, you can do Arduino stuff, kind of. But you can use like a full-fledged programming language like Python or something like that. How much is yeah. one for? The yeah. Which is like, it, there's yeah. several sizes of it. Yeah. The yeah, one I got was like five bucks or ten bucks. There are several little devices that will let you put Arduino shields on your Pi. Uh, one of them is called Elevo, and I like it because it has a good name. But it hits the size of the Pi and it just sits on top of the GPIO, and you can use your Arduino shields. Some of them have less clever names, like attach Arduino shields to your Pi. Like, some of the devices they just forgot to name. They should name one of them. Stick Arduino shields on your Pi. Okay. But yeah, those things exist. Uh, I just have a, I got a Raspberry Pi and I'm willing to do something with it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got it because a bunch of my friends got it and then uh, the projects that they kind of did, they just made like a little main box so I to play video games on. So I was looking to do something with that, so pretty good ideas. Uh, nothing yet, still just learning. What have you guys built or want to build? I want to build a uh, thermostat from the house because programming a programmable thermostat sucks. And so what I really want to do is be able to set up like a, like a Google Calendar and tell it what temperature I want at any given time so that then I can customize any specific day so that when, when that time comes around and say I'm on vacation, instead of having to reprogram the bloody thing, I just go into, I just go into Google Calendar and then it pings, it pings the, the thermostat and tells it what temperature I want it to be at and off totally. it goes. Super handy. That's what I'm going for. That sounds very cool. How about you? I'm going to build like a fuel management system on the motorcycle and all the gas tanks. Dude. Keep me track, track <laughs> mileage and gas and fuel and that kind of thing. You shouldn't get together with the people who monitor their homebrew system. That's a bad combination. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very simple. But I haven't, I haven't started any of it yet. I haven't figured out in my head how I want to do it, but I haven't started yet. Yeah. I'm still arguing between Arduino and the Raspberry Pi, which actual physical platforms I want to play with. Yeah. Well, they go together very well. I mean, the Raspberry Pi is what you use to program the Arduino. You can actually run the whole Arduino like programming stack on the Raspberry Pi and hook up an Arduino to it and program it from the Raspberry Pi. Hmm. Fascinating. See, it goes to show how much I know, which is to say, not a whole thing. Yeah, I think the key difference to keep in mind when you're comparing things like Arduino and Raspberry Pi is that the Arduino doesn't natively run an operating system. It's not self-aware in the same context that a PC would be or the Raspberry Pi is. You write program code and it executes across the Arduino uh, microcontroller, basically. Uh, which is great for traditional embedded use cases where you don't want the overhead of an operating system using up resources. You just want to write a program, execute it through the system, get your output, get your result. But the use case that you were talking about where you want them sort of always on thermostat is adjustable, holding Google Calendar. Well, you certainly could do that with an Arduino system by starting with an operating system already that's already always on, that's already got a lot of this library code that's pre-written and pre-existing to interface with things like the web, with Google Calendar, uh, those APIs. Uh, you're probably going to have a much easier time using that Raspberry Pi to solve those problems because you're not going to have to write all code from scratch to get there or build the Arduino stack up and then push it all through and you know have it work. So that's the thing. Yeah. That's not my answer question. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You still have to come to our talk tomorrow to learn the rest of the stuff you didn't know you didn't know. Oh, fair. Enough. <laughs> I'll be back. How about you? Uh, I was um, actually scoping out the meeting to see if there's space to drive my robot in here with the Raspberry Pi. Of course, there's space to drive your robot in here. Yeah. Uh, we'll make space if necessary. By which I mean, go get your robot. Yeah. Oh, the robots. <laughs> we have an entire table put it on. What? We have an entire table put it on. 
No, no, it, it, it's floor. Or we can just flip the table and look at it. Yeah, it, it, it can but carry a few hundred pounds. Whatever we need to do, we can make yeah, it yeah. a robot. Like that giant walking robot Wait, from the end of the robot pop comes in. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't have a cyber plug in. Okay. Wait, does it have, think it's going to say exterminate and shoot us anyway? <laughs> does it have, well, you can see it. I think it has. Yeah, we'll potentially misidentify anyone in this room as Sarah Khan. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, good, good. Do you really have a speaker? Turns out it's got some crazy speakers. Hi, D. Hi, I'm D. What's up? I don't know. I'm just in this room now. Do you have a Raspberry Pi? No. Do you, do you want, want one? I don't know. What would you do with it? I I do not know, but I'm sure it would be ridiculous. I promise. I just did a laser shot. What just happened? Is that somebody's phone? Yeah, I have that too. <laughs> okay. Maybe. Well, the guy wouldn't get a robot, so we don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> How about you? What did you build or want to build? Uh, what? The Raspberry Pi? Yes, I, I have a or X, you know what uh, XBMC, so. But, uh, I took a gift card tin that was in the shape of a PlayStation 3, and I put it in there so it looks like a miniature PlayStation 3. <laughs> <laughs> it has an identity crisis. <laughs> yeah. Microsoft, you think someone's so weak. How about you? Uh, I've wanted to do time-lapse photography with it. Just so, so hook that up to a motor and get some movement into a time-lapse. Yeah, so you can totally do that with the Raspberry Pi camera. And I have a friend who was just telling me about a coworker of his who had what may be a terrible idea, but at least was interesting. He wanted to mount a Raspberry Pi in his motorcycle helmet and then have the camera here uh, taking pictures at intervals as he drove across country. And I'm like, that's really awesome until you have a wreck and they pick the pieces of the board out <laughs> of well, I've actually done that with, uh, with, uh, with an app, not on a motorcycle, but in my car. I just have a little dash mount. Yeah. And just Taking time lapse of photos. I think that's a better plan than having your dash cam in your head. Yeah, I'm on the Ever say about the laser? It's like maybe I should get a laser underneath the visor. What? That's not even cool to take a Raspberry Pi and use it as a media center in a car. You actually have done it in a Oh, yeah, totally. That'd be real Chapter is out in the book. I was trying to remember if it actually made it in the book, but I think it was. It did. Yeah, it So when you see our cool soundboard costume, I'm going to talk about it like it's cool, and then you guys are going to be like, this sucks. But the screen in it, that's actually sort of, it's either intended to do that or to be mounted on uh, cameras for photographers to see what they shot, like as they're doing it. Or to be in the chest of the costume, I'm sure that's what they intended. But the book, which I will I promise to stop promoting, uh, has an entire chapter described on how to make a car uh, in Car Media Center, basically, how you can get that working with the concerns you have with power issues and how you can make sure that it all runs reliably and how you can control it and whatnot. So you what was the name of your book again? Yeah. Raspberry Pi hacks. So what kind of fancy stuff can you do by setting up in your car? Well again, so the, the, the biggest issue with the car is going to be power. Um, depending on how many power ports your car has and how far you can make that power go. Um, so if you look at how uh, if you went to you know a store and said you know hey Best Buy I want you to install an car entertainment system in your car, what they'll do is they will put in a very expensive custom kit that's all wired together with a single power source so that it can plug into uh, the cigarette lighter down here. Um, fancier setups that don't come from Best Buy, uh, like conversion van kits, will actually hook in directly to the battery of the car. They'll, they'll actually modify the wiring in the car. Now, I figured that if you were building something with a Raspberry Pi, you probably were not going to be at the conversion kit stage. You were not going to be connecting directly to the car battery, and that you would be dependent on the current coming out of the cigarette lighter. So, uh, well, a lot of cars now have like a regular roll plug in the back seat. If you're using it for like the kids watching video. Sometimes they get minivans do sometimes. Sometimes my Jenna do. does. Yeah. Well, there's little cheap things at Walmart that you can just plug in the cigarette lighter and it gives you all that. So. Yeah. Sure, and we talk about why those may or may not work for what the cases are. The Raspberry Pi tends to want a clean one amp uh, power feed into it to run reliably. And a lot of those cheap Walmart ones that you buy for, you know, 37 cents or you pick up free at an event uh, won't give you one, one amp clean uh, off of your cigarette lighter. Uh, you 
have to look to make sure that you've got something that's going to be reliable for that use case. And again, if you're just doing this as a fun little project and your kids aren't going to scream bloody murder because a lab has stopped and they wait for the movie. Uh, uh, but so you're powering the Pi, you're powering some sort of a screen. Or you have a separate power for the screen. What kind of screens are there? I mean, Joel's trying to find a screen that's small but still usable. And so there's a couple different places that are good places to start looking for screens. Uh, Adafruit sells a couple different types of screens of various sizes. When we started writing the book, they had like two, and now I think they have eight or nine different kinds of screens. Um, SparkFun is a good place to look to see if they've got specific screens. Do they have any screens? Um, they've been adding them slowly. eBay. Ebay is a good place, but you're, you're going to be sort of crapshooting on quality if you're going on Ebay because a lot of times they will say things like screen, and that will be the entire list of the <laughs> Yeah, and so the, there's a, is it DX.com? Is that yes. the Chinese site? Yeah, so DX.com is, uh, is how you get things for cheap on quite literally the slow boat. It's all coming from China, and it all costs like 45 cents, but yeah, that means you can buy a whole bunch of stuff for 45 cents and see what works. But also, there's no guarantee on shipping, so what they they quite literally do is they fill a container. It's going to take one. Like, and when the container is full, they show it and ship it off. Four or six weeks. DX. Yeah, DX. So a guy in front of So the last place to look is adafruit.com. Uh, the last place to look is specifically to look for in-car entertainment system components, like you were repairing an existing in-car entertainment system. You can oftentimes find just the screen unit for a larger setup where the screen just dies and you just want to replace the screen, and then you can just buy that screen. Uh, I've seen some pretty random uh, good deals on that sort of tech by going through that view. Uh, now, the second question is, do you want it to be a touch screen? Is that how you're going to navigate through the interface on that? Because that makes things more complicated. Uh, there's various hacks you can do to take a regular screen and convert it into a touch screen by putting a, uh, an overlay, basically, on top of the screen where you see through it, but it actually is picking up the uh, signal from you touching the screen. So what kind of price screen? So if I wanted to do one type versus another versus another, you said, you know, this, this TX.com is really cheap for a few bucks you can try something. Then you can go out on eBay and find something for, what, 20 bucks? Is there something oh, no, like so 50, for, 70 dollars? Pardon? I was asking, I was going to compare a couple things we bought. How much was the Mimo? Mimo was 150, I think. And that was a touch screen. Yeah, that's about yeah. seven inches. Yeah, that was a seven inch touch screen. And then the screen that we're using in the costume is also seven, no, it's, 10 it's nine. 10.1, uh, inches. The quality is not like super awesome if your child is at all picky, they're not gonna want to watch movies on it. But uh, the company that makes it purportedly makes better ones, it's called Lilliput is the name of the company, but this one was two hundred dollars and it has a forty-five dollar battery. So you keep referencing this costume, but where is this going to be moving into the uh, So I'll have it on for Masquerade tomorrow, and then we'll have it at the top. At Masquerade, I will have it on, and then if I have not passed out a heat exhaustion because I can't breathe inside the helmet, I'll have it off and be talking at ourselves. And if she dies inside the costume, she's, she will just have it propped up against the wall. And basically, <laughs> it all velcros together so you can see. Well, well, so so that thing, you say you have it off, you mean you're going to take it off so And put on clothes. <laughs> no, 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 this, this, this is not that kind of right. Well, so, uh, so that I can actually move, I do have clothes on under the foam. <laughs> So again, I, I think you're, not a I think your low end on that range is if you buy something incredibly dirt cheap that has very poor quality, you might be able to find something in the seventy to ninety dollar range on the low end. And you could easily get up to the thousand dollar range if you were going for something really nice. To be fair, if all you want is your kid to watch the movies in the back seat, you can buy a fifty dollar DVD player. But that's not why you build stuff for the rest of the time. You build it because you want to find out if you build it. The other the nice thing that's different in the Raspberry Pi setup versus a fifty dollar DVD player is the DVD player plays at most one. Time if you want to build up an archive of every movie your kid might possibly want to watch on a cross country trip, then your Raspberry Pi might be a better fit for that sort of project. I did see one of your project on I think it was a big magazine. This guy made um, an iPad out uh, of a Raspberry Pi that was almost the exact same size as a normal iPad. It was nuts. It has to be a little bigger because the pie is already the thickness of the Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the handle that he used in that project is unobtained now as a result of it being made magazine. Oh, yeah. So we've got the one that was for the screen. Yes. That the company, because the panel was discontinued when he 
picked it to start with, okay. and all of the stock is gone. You, you can't find that. Yeah. One, of, one of my favorite projects, it's another thing that's just for fun, is called the Kindleberry Pie, where somebody took an old version of Kindle and used it as the screen and keyboard for the pie. His instructions are hilarious. They say things like, you're an idiot, you're going to screw this up, and I don't know why you're still reading it, but <laughs> it's fun to read. Okay. The Atrix Laptop is another notable thing that, uh, because of the way that the Atrix Laptop was built for a Motorola Atrix phone that does not exist anymore in any meaningful way. No one is selling it for you to carry, well, you carry a phone on it. But the laptop was nice because it had a built-in battery, it had a built-in keyboard. It was intended so you could dock your phone into this laptop and turn it into a sort of studio. A tiny laptop. laptop. It yeah. looks like a tiny laptop. It's about that big, and it flips open and there's a screen and a keyboard. But it has HDMI video in. It has power <coughs> for the Pi and the right connecting and the right type. And you know, all you have to do is basically you know tape the Pi to the back of the screen <laughs> and wire up the right cables to it. With one weird cable that you have to. Yeah, one weird connector. So you yeah. can't find a cable like this. It's the mini HDMI male to regular HDMI female, I think, and I had one and I lost it, and then the last time we gave our talk, I was like, I'm so sad, I lost it the next day, day this guy was like, here, I bought a hundred of them on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so that's another thing, is that, you know, that, because that provides all that you need, just the missing components, and so there's quite a few people that are using that as a sort of I made a laptop out of a Raspberry Pi. And the laptop originally sold for $400, and you could go for about 40 or 50 on eBay now. Which is funny, because before people figured out the Raspberry Pi angle to it, it was floating at like 40 50 and then you could see the price creep back up a little bit. Yeah, it's back <laughs> down now. I think, I think everybody who had that plan has mostly done it. I hear a robot. <laughs> Both the doors. Yeah. Look at these. I was wondering if they had a sandwich. So can you fix my Roomba? <laughs>
unless you're so much faster that they never notice you. Yeah. What kind of batteries is it running on? This guy is running off of, right now it's two batteries, because when I was ordering the monitor going. Oh, no, it's not. It's, okay. It slides, but. Uh, so there's a 33 amp hour 12 volt here, and a, I forgot the capacity of the two six volts. Um, you know, when I was ordering the new power supply stuff, I meant to buy a 12 volt, 12 volt converter, or something that puts 12 volts out and takes 8 to 30 volts in. So it would give a nice clean 12 volts for the display. And I forgot. So the display wants its clean 12 volts so it can't share with the motor. So I threw in another battery. But the display does eat uh, a good 2 volts. Or 1.84 amps or something. Because when we turn off the display, I appreciate these. <laughs> yeah, duct tape is my friend. <coughs> Quick question. Sure. Is there a NASA logo on the side that I can't see? I hope. <laughs> no. Oh darn. It's not a solar Mars rover. There's a Lego logo. <laughs> There's a Lego logo. Yeah. And <laughs> when I first it's made. Strong. The uh, robot, it was actually controlled with the LEGO RCX. So the mechanics of it are much older than the uh, Raspberry Pi. But it is a real Raspberry Pi in there. The escape key. Where did I go? Oh, there's the key. <laughs> so, uh, I bought a cheap um, used projector from the local community college because they're upgrading. And using the Raspberry Pi camera offset a bit from the projector, I want to just have it project a vertical line that scans back and forth. <laughs> You know, and then look at the curve that it traces and build a 3D model of the world and also do the, you know, the Xbox Connect style, project a grid and then see where the grid falls, but do it in visible light so that people can see how it works. Because I, um, I mentor a, a local high school first team and it really helps when you're mentoring stuff to have it so you can see how it works rather than the connect which is just like magic. <laughs> Magic's no fun. There's no magic here, you know. Like the power supply and stuff is nicely in a clear plastic box so you can see the, the parts. But it's it's amazing what you can do with duct tape and Wood screws. <laughs> and Barbie Jeeps. And Barbie Jeeps. And Barbie Jeeps. <laughs> and, yeah. At one point, oh, much of this made is two Barbie Jeeps. Four wheel drive. Because when it's bouncing around the driveway and stuff, it's pretty common that you only have two or three wheels with any traction. So every motor is independently driven. The left and right side are driven in parallel. So they're doing the same thing, but um, differentials are heavy and great. So you have two motors on each side. Yeah, and so the motor... So a Barbie Jeep is, has two motors in it? Right. A Barbie Jeep has two motors, one to the left, one to the right, because differentials are expensive and awkward and they break. And it's so much simpler to just have a left motor and a right motor when you're doing Why is it even bothered? Figure that you go with a single axle and just drag away. It's <laughs> more uh, You don't do that to people's off. carpets. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Should we do robotics with Raspberry Pi? It's not us. That oh. sounds interesting. <laughs> what? 
There's a robotic. Oh, oh I, maybe, 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 I don't know. Um, I thought tomorrow at 3 p.m. there's a uh, distributed robotics with Raspberry Pi. Oh, well, I should go. <laughs> I assume you were teaching it. <laughs> well, there's there's also at uh, 8 p.m. Uh, on Saturday in I don't know how to pronounce this Algonac uh, D. There's a uh, robotics um, or uh, pardon me the Raspberry Pi hacks, which I think was that's us. That's us. All right. Yes. So this was one that I set up. Cool. You set up.